So hello everyone. I'm Fano from iPads Lab at Shanghai Jiao Tong University. I'm going to present our work, Tree SLS, a whole system persistent microkernel with tree structured state checkpoint on OVM. So this work tries to explore new possibilities for data persistence with modern devices. So data persistence is an essential consideration for applications. However, for a long time, the available storage devices fail to provide performance and persistence at the same time. Given this, this limitation, modern applications are built on the two-layered memory and storage hierarchy. They will put runtime data in memory for efficient data access and serialize data to disk for persistence. And if the system crash, they should also rebuild the in-memory data structure from the disk. However, implementing data persistence is not an easy task, as it involves the cost of serialization and deserialization, non-trivial developing efforts, and has the potential to introduce bugs. So single-level storage is proposed to liberate application from the complex data persistence. It provides a single-level memory abstraction for applications to execute and store data in it. Single-level store can guarantee that data in this single-level memory is transparently persisted, so applications do not need to implement data persistence. Existing systems use whole system persistence to provide this single-level memory abstraction. Each state of the system has a specific location in the storage device, ensuring the persistence of the whole system. However, since CPU cannot directly access these objects in the storage devices, they are cached in other layers to allow CPU access. And the operating system will take consistent checkpoints to transparently persist the whole system. However, existing single-level storage, uh, single-level store is still limited by two drawbacks. First, compared with application-implemented persistence, while single-level store can reduce programming efforts, it also introduces high performance overhead, since checkpointing the whole system is costly. Second, existing single-level store fails to provide external synchrony. So when we say external synchrony, we are referring to the consistency between the internal world and the external world. Modern applications heavily rely on this to provide uh, services to external entities like a client. However, existing checkpoint-based single-level store failed to provide this consistency. For example, if an external client, external client send a request like set x to one, the system will set the value of x to one and send response to inform the client that the request has been applied. However, upon a crash, system will roll back state to the previous checkpoint, and as at, as at the previous checkpoint, x is equal to zero. So we will also roll back x to zero, and this will cause confusion to the external client, uh, as the state is lost. Some single-level store system choose to provide general APIs for applications to allow them to log the request and apply the log when rolling back. With this, the request is persist, persisted immediately, and clients can get a consistent response. However, non-trivial efforts are required to modify, modify the applications to use this journal API. And this, uh, and this contradicts single-level store's original intention to, liber to liberate application from the persistence efforts. So we target to provide an ideal single-level store with both low performance overhead and transparent external synchrony. We first address the performance issue with two insights. Our first insight is to revisit single level store with the persisting memory. So pre previous single level store system has to cache data in memory to allow CPU access, but with the fast, better addressability, uh, better addressable and persisting memory, things has been changed. So the fast, bad addressable memory is a perfect single level memory. CPU can directly access and manipulate the persisted data on it. So now runtime data are directly persisted 
saving us great efforts to persist the data. Unfortunately, putting all system state on persistent memory does not make the whole system persist naturally. This is caused by the limited persistent domain, even with the EADR support, which persists cache after the system crashes. Some states, like the CPU register and device states, can still be lost upon a power failure. As a result, we still need a checkpoint based method to checkpoint the valid, uh, volatile state and make sure that there is a consistent checkpoint of the whole system. So since now we need a method to checkpoint the whole system, but in the kernel states it's complex to be efficiently captured and checkpoint. Usually the state of the system includes process state, inter-process state, as well as the state of the system services. The system service state is most com the most complex part. For example, file system services need to maintain complicated states such as the FD tables, the inode uh, and D entry cache, and this state tends to be large in size, and developers of various services may develop device state structures, and uh, this all together at a considerable level of complexity when it comes to checkpointing this state. So in a capability-based microkernel, system services are implemented as user-space services rather than within the kernel. So all these complex states uh, can be managed within the user space, so uh, their complexity is, is hidden, and we can trap on them as normal user space process. In addition, in a capability-based microkernel, each process uses a capability group to refer to all accessible state objects, and through this way, all state is grouped as a capability tree and we can just go through the tree to find all states and checkpoint them. So based on these two insights, we propose a new single level store, tree SLS. Uh, so next we will first introduce its architecture and then introduce how it solves the two drawbacks of the existing single level store works. Uh, okay, so our system, tree SLS, is built on a capability microkernel to use the capability tree to efficiently capture the whole system state. We will put system state on persistent memory and design a checkpoint manager to efficiently checkpoint all states. Uh, so this manager is responsible for managing the memory space for all objects. Uh, also, it has a checkpoint model. It will periodically stop the whole system and take checkpoints of the runtime capability tree. So through checkpointing this capability tree, all system state except state of the checkpoint manager itself is uh, constructed and protected by our checkpoint methods. So the checkpoint manager itself should also be consistent with our checkpointed capability tree, and it is self-protected with the journal method. Uh, so with this architecture, we have a bigger step towards our first goal to reduce the performance overhead as we efficiently capture all the states and design a module to efficient checkpoint them. And next, we will further show some details of how we can efficiently check, really efficiently checkpoint a consistent capability tree. So checkpointing the whole capability tree every time is obviously not efficient. So we design a persistent memory oriented checkpointing method we divided objects into two types, the frequently changed ones, like a thread, and the slowly changed object, as a page. So for those frequently changed objects, we will directly copy them during the stopped word checkpoint. On the other hand, for those slowly changed objects, we copy and write them during the runtime. We also propose a hybrid page checkpointing method to further increase the efficiency. We divide, uh, we divide pages into two types, the hot ones and cold ones. And we will classify hot pages as frequently changed objects and also directly copy them during the stop word checkpoint. In addition, we put uh, those hot pages on DRAM to further accelerate our system. 
and we developed several related methods to make it really work. And details can be found in our paper. So furthermore, in order to support transparent external synchrony, we delay all responses by one checkpoint. So the response is only visible after it is really persisted by a checkpoint. Uh, this is an idea inspired by the resynced sync. Uh, and we implemented this by modifying the network driver so it is transparent to applications. Uh, however, this method increased in uh, increased latency, uh, and that's why existing single-level store avoids implementing such methods due to their high associated cost in terms of checkpoint frequency. But uh, the, fr the performance cost is acceptable, acceptable with our high frequency checkpoints, and we will provide further evidence of this in the evaluation part. Okay, so uh, let's come to the implement implementation and the evaluation part. So Traces is built on Chikao, which is an educational capability-based microkernel, and it supports Poxys APIs for applications to easily run on it. We modify both the kernel space and the user space to implement the checkpoint manager and support external synchrony. So for evaluation, we test Tree SLS on CPU with EADR support. We use various applications for testing, and our system functions well on these applications. So, in the following parts, we will uh, answer some questions. So, uh, the first question is how much is the stop the word checkpointing overhead? So, we give the total time required to checkpoint different applications. The result shows that the chap our checkpoint can be finished in around 100 microseconds. We can achieve this efficient checkpoint since we can efficiently checkpoint the capability tree. And we also break down the time required to checkpoint each object in the capability tree. The result shows that the incremental checkpoint of different objects can be taken at nanosec nanosecond scale. And the time of a full checkpoint is more costly because uh, it needs to rebuild the object from scratch. Uh, but it, as it only occurs at the first time of the checkpoint, so it is acceptable. Uh, so stop the word checkpoint is not the only cost. Uh, page, uh, since we uh, async copy page during the runtime, uh, it will also introduce overhead. We show the runtime overhead by running set benchmark on Redis. The baseline is the system running without any data persistence. And compare with it, our checkpoint with one millisecond interval will introduce uh, acceptable overhead. Also, if we enable external synchrony, namely if we delay sending every response one checkpoint, the latency will increase by around one checkpoint interval and thus hurt the overall throughput. Uh, but for current mainstream microsecond scaled applications, our one microsecond delay has a minor impact on performance. Yeah. So finally, we can compare tree SLS with application's original persisting method. The write ahead log which log client request before exactly do the request, uh, and the, the Linux WAL, where the application implements write ahead log for data persistence. So the result shows that our, single, uh, our tree SLS can achieve better throughputs than Linux WAL in various workloads, except for the read-only workloads, uh, since WAL has to do nothing for read operations. Oh, the things is similar for RocksDB benchmark, and we can achieve up to 2.5 higher throughput compared to application's original persistent method. So in, conc in conclusion, TreeSLS explores new possibilities for whole system persistence with the help of microkernel and persistent memory. Our system can complete a whole system checkpoint in around 100 microseconds and achieve better throughput than applications' original persisting methods. 
So the homepage and source codes are available here. So and that's all. Thank you very much. And I'm happy to take questions. Thank you very much. And um, we open for questions. Please state your name and affiliation. I'm Peter Chen, University of Michigan. Nice talk. Um, my question is about your fault model. So what faults are you, is TreeLS SLS intended to survive? And in particular, are you worried about checkpointing a uh, state that might have been corrupted by a software error? Uh, so, uh, uh, if I understand correctly, I would say we are uh, uh, work for real applications. Yeah. Uh, so. what, what faults are you intended to survive? So the question is, if if faulty data is produced by whatever error in, in your system, you're checkpointing the faults, right? Is it oh, so you mean if the CPU register as well as the device list can also be uh, persisted some way? Uh, and no, I'm wondering if the memory that you're uh, checkpointing might have a fault in it due to a software error. And are you worried about checkpointing that faulty state so that it'll, when you recover, you'll still have the faulty oh, yeah. uh, data? Oh, so uh, as we um, periodically take a checkpoint of the system, so if later uh, some system crash, uh, a software-related error crash, and we can uh, suppose that maybe our last checkpoint uh, in, in this checkpoint state, there is no uh, software errors because uh, maybe it's not happened yet. So we can roll back to this state and let it run. So, uh, and we can maybe to change, change the code or change something to let it run normally later. I think in defense of the uh, author here, um, the same happens when you write things to disk. <laughs> There's no inherent protection. Any other questions? Hi, Daniel Lohmann, Leibniz University Hannover. So very nice talk. Um, I wonder you apparently depend on ERDR persistency guarantees. So what would change in performance numbers if uh, we have to drop the ERDR property as we apparently have and caches are not part of the persistency domain? Uh, so you mean if uh, ERDR can extend it to also check on other states? So if, if caches are not persistent in case yeah, of a crash. Yeah. Uh, so if uh, cache are not uh, persisted, maybe we should add some flash operations when uh, every time we checkpoint an uh, object to make it really flash from the cache to the disk. And also uh, during the runtime, if we checkpoint the page, we should also make sure this uh, is flash from the cache. Or okay, otherwise sure. we can... Uh, yeah, sure, but yeah. do you have any um, impression of what would this mean to the performance of your system if you uh, have to cache all the time? Yeah, yeah yes, we will uh, act, uh, actually downgrade the performance uh, as flash is not, uh, that's... Uh, okay, thanks. Uh, yeah. Any more questions? Um, I have one. You yeah. glossed over the implementation. So what support is really needed in the microkernel to make this all work? Uh, What's in the microkernel? What, how much of the functionality do you need to have inside the kernel? What does the kernel have to provide for making this possible? Oh, yeah. Uh, so I think it's our, we need a checkpoint model to do this. And also, currently, our system is uh, on the suppose that our uh, so, uh, ma marriage manager are also in the kernel space because we we can leverage it to efficiently uh, go through the uh, the capability tree and uh, use this in kernel module to uh, my lock object and uh, so do this. Okay. So, uh, if if the ma marriage manager are some kind of like in the user space or maybe when. Uh, uh, we need to provide some interface for it to uh, go through the to go through the capability tree, and I think we can achieve this. Okay. Um, thank you very much.